So we were Nadi and Sun. So it was basically a, a, a group of us, uh, uh, former students, who felt there was a need to open up the character of uh, Malaysian public discourse. We were using a lot of uh, material. We published mainly in Malay, but about roughly between 15 to 25 percent was in English. Usually some of the more erudite technical things uh, on things like the economy and so on. But otherwise, uh, much of it was on cultural analysis, political analysis and so on. The name of the magazine was actually inspired by the late poet uh, laureate uh, Osman Awang, uh, who, who suggested Nadi Insan might be a, a good name. Uh, Nadi, of course, means uh, pulse and Insan is uh, humanity, the sort of pulse of humanity, if you will. But it was really intended to be the pulse of the nation. But we didn't like the words associated with the nation at that time. Uh, and we were quite concerned that given the popular use of those words, uh, we would actually um, mislead uh, many people um, about the nature of the magazine. The publisher was something called INSAN, uh, the Institute for Social Analysis, which had been created a couple of years earlier in 1977. So we finally got the license uh, to publish Nadi Insan. The application was made in 78 and the license was granted in early 79. We chose to publish it on the 10th anniversary of uh, May 69. We saw that as a turning point in the history of the nation and then there was a need to try to open up public discourse relating to the nature of the nation and the future of the nation. We, of course, uh, took the opportunity to interview Tunku Abdurrahman, the first Prime Minister, for whom also uh, May 69 was a major turning point where electorally his ruling coalition uh, did very badly and he had to eventually step down as the Prime Minister and so on and so forth. Now, the immediate inspiration for the cover of the publication, well, to be quite honest, I had a motorcycle in those days and I couldn't afford a car, so I, I was going through one of the many squatter areas in KL. If I'm not mistaken, this was the border between Abdullah Hukum and uh, Krinchi, which was uh, largely settled by people from Krinchi in Sumatra. And then I saw this Nanka or Champada uh, wrapped up in a poster of John Travolta. And uh, I decided to stop and take a photograph of it. It was you know, responding to an opportunity rather than something where we went around looking for a Champada uh, wrapped up in uh, Travolta. Now Travolta had become an icon of a new cultural trend emerging. Uh, the Travolta made Saturday Night Fever, which was released, I think, in 1977. But very importantly, it represented, uh, in a sense, a certain kind of, uh, for want of a better term, a certain type of introspective escapism. The Vietnam War had ended two years earlier, in 1975, and uh, for, for the younger generation, uh, the end of the Vietnam War, in a sense, represented the decline of the generation of protests which had begun from the mid-1960s as the Vietnam War escalated and many young men uh, were conscripted, drafted uh, to fight in Vietnam. So, in a sense, Saturday Night Fever, Greece and a number of other films which Travolta was either directly involved with or inspired by Saturday Night Fever were emblematic of a cultural trend in the United States. But the ephemeral character of cultural trends was very well captured by the use of a poster which uh, must have cost the owners of the poster a bit of money, you know, and here it was being used to wrap a fruit which when plucked eventually uh, for consumption uh, probably meant that the poster would not be used again. It was a pretty expensive poster because it, it was probably on art paper and a fairly large uh, uh, poster. And so it was, uh, I thought, a very telling statement of the times, of the nature of popular culture, of a particular type of Western, imported Western popular culture. And many people who were participating 
who were carried away with the culture. Uh, sometimes it was imitative, but in a sense, it was also reflective of a new generation which, in a sense, had emerged post May 69. What was important in the West uh, was not necessarily important here, but you have, in a sense, the appropriation of Western cultural symbols in a very different context and uh, representing, uh, in a sense, a very important moment. So I guess that's uh, my main commentary on this. I, I, to be quite honest, this was published in May 79, and uh, the photograph was probably taken in March or February 79. So it wasn't uh, something which was you know, planned. Uh, there was a lot of spontaneity in what we did with the publication at that time. At the risk of, of overestimating our significance. We, we, we had a, f uh, a few thousand sales every month, relatively few subscribers, but we had absolutely no backing from any major publishing company. So it was always a, a tough battle and uh, our license was suspended and withdrawn almost five years later in, in, in 1983. I must say that for some of us, it was a bit of a relief because it had become a bit of a drudgery to prepare the material for the magazine and so on and so forth. And it wasn't as if we earned anything from all those efforts. But it represented an important moment uh, where we tried to integrate uh, different types of discourses, political discourses, economic discourses, cultural discourses, in uh, what we had hoped uh, would be a popular magazine for young thinking people.